Yes, sir. AAA's two seven twenty seven. Finally, enough video. You already know. You already know the vibes. You already know the jiggy, jiggy with the wiggy. Top ten, um, top ten cameos in Space Jam: A New Legacy. I haven't seen Space Jam, but it it looks good. Everyone says it's shit, but I reckon it looks sick. Like there's, I know there's Rick and Morty. I mean. I've seen that like a billion times. It is Rick and Morty. But oh my god. I really want to see Space Jam. Everyone says it's shit. I reckon it's... I feel like it's going to be better than the other one. Besides Lola. <laughs> Am I right? Lola. Lola Bugs. Lola Bunny. Alright. This was the video. This was the video. Hey, what's that for, Doc? Gotta make a list. We're going to need the most powerful Warner Brothers characters for this team. Now let's see. Who to get? Hmm. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cameos in Space Jam A New Legacy. Hey, I think he wants to communicate. I think he wants to communicate. <laughs> that really ruined the mask. Like, it was, the, the, the mask, the first movie, was really good, but then they made one about the dog, and then they made one about another guy with the mask. It was so shit, but the first one. They ruined the franchise, but, bro. You really got some skills. You might be able to play in here again. Thanks, Mike. I'll, I'll probably quote you on that. But I'm going to take this opportunity to retire from the game of basketball. Nice place, huh? Wrong way. Yeah. I was born right down there. For this list, we're looking at some of our favorite cameos made throughout the sequel to the 1996 classic. In case you haven't seen it yet, here is your spoiler warning. Rick, was there a cameo Rick, we missed? Rick, Which Rick, one was your favorite? Get Rick up and, and Morty, slam in the comments the club, below, but for me now, and my shorty. get the jam going. Number 10, Dr. Evil. He's got to jam up, saying they were wasting their time, that there was much more to see in a cyber voice than old Toon World. It made them turn their backs on who they really were. Upon learning about the tunes leaving bugs on Toon World, we immediately began wondering where they could have possibly gone to. Turns out they all ventured into other cinematic universes. Sylvester and Elmer Fudd specifically went to the Austin Powers universe, and this was where we got oh, to briefly see. revisit the dastardly Dr. Evil. He is exactly like you in every way. <laughs> Except one-eighth your size. Sure, this was all archived footage, but still interesting to see the mad genius interacting with the tunes as if they'd been his minions this entire time. I mean, see. Honestly, we had to do a double take after seeing Sylvester as the shaved cat, Mr. Bigglesworth. Sylvester, is that you? Number nine, Bill Murray. <laughs> Sylvester! Five yards. Okay, little fella. You my friend? Or are you my enemy? You are my friend, right? You are my ally. You are my associate, my personal assistant. You are my weapon. Just Let hit me. that golf ball. One of the coolest cameos of the original Space Jam was Bill Murray, who played as Michael Jordan's golfing buddy and would later help the tunes win the game. We'll find someone. Da, 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 da. Whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't know Dan Aykroyd was in this picture. Unfortunately, Murray does not return in a new legacy with a supporting role or even traditional cameo. Aww. But there is still a very brief appearance from him during the end credits. Viewers are shown various pictures of the tunes with different characters and actors. One of them shows Bill Murray golfing with bugs. We wish Murray had had a bigger part in the Bill movie, Murray. but it was still nice to see him in some form regardless. They're going to need new players with talent, guys who are skilled but never really thought about a professional career before. You think I got a shot? Come on, really. No. Don't I thought, it. to be honest, I thought Michael Jordan was like the same age as LeBron. Michael Jordan's as old as now. Michael Jordan didn't even verse LeBron. I don't think he did. He only versed Kobe. Kobe's old. I mean, he's he was old. But Michael, oh my God, I thought Michael was... Who's better, Michael or LeBron? Michael or LeBron. I feel like Michael's better. I don't know. LeBron's pretty good, but Michael might be the best. You know who's underrated? Magic Johnson. He's good as fuck. He's underrated. I reckon he's underrated. Number eight, a buffet of DC love. <laughs> yeah, the, the children. 
the Looney Tunes are no strangers to the DC universe, having crossed <gasps> oh, over with Superman. The likes of Superman and Batman on multiple occasions. So we already expected some love for the comic book brand, and we got way more than we anticipated. What the Today fuck? I want to see this movie so bad. Day of your life, Lola Bunny. You have earned the right to become one of us. In addition to what? an appearance from oh, the Justice League this and movie's not Woman bad. in the film, it's not the shit. game itself featured DC villains and heroes from multiple eras, especially those from the Batman franchise. Have you ever seen this many Dark Knights and Jokers in one setting? And to think, they even threw in the Arnold Schwarzenegger version of Mr. Freeze, complete with glimmering bathrobe. What's wrong? Oh, that was awesome. What do you mean, what's wrong? They're catching up. Number seven, The Mask. Hey. Uh oh. You can't make the scene if you don't have the green. I better make a little step. <laughs> While we're on the subject of comic books, there is one underrated comic icon from the 90s prominently featured in the background of the game. One yellow-suited, green-faced man ripped straight out of a classic Jim Carrey flick. Roadrunner smokes green! It's the oldest trick in the book! Your eyes do not deceive you. That is Stanley Ipkiss our noble and equally loony hero from the short-lived franchise. While Kerry does not reprise his role for this cameo, the extra portraying him does an excellent job evoking the same energy and mood. Honestly, it's enough for us to beg for another entry in the mask, or at the very least, get a new line of comics. Hold on to your luck, no Yo, there's so many cameos in this. For an overhaul. Number six, The War Boys. Oh, Wally Coyote and Roadrunner. As Mad Max fans ourselves, the brief moments of Looney Tunes crossing over with the post-apocalyptic franchise of Roaring Motors were heaven. Of course the War Boys would show up to the climactic boop, game, boop. but the best moment with these guys was earlier in the film when we see Wile E. Coyote riding with them. Oh shit. Yeah, this is definitely a place Wiley and Runner would run amok in. And it was hilarious seeing the mangy mutt spraying his mouth and holding up a witness me sign. Any chance we could get a full cartoon of this concept? Yes, please, please. This guy? Yeah, he's explosive. Number five, Lil Ray Howery and Ernie Johnson Jr. Lil Ralph? Man, what are you doing here? Hey. Ernie Johnson? This is crazy. Look, I was on my phone, right? And I was getting on the elevator. Wait a minute, did I fall down the elevator shaft? Ernie, are we dead? Who the fuck is that? I don't know who this that is. What looks like? Basketball fans may have lost their minds when the game was about to begin. Moments prior, Al G manages to digitize and kidnap these two famed basketball commentators. Between Johnson's calm and professional demeanor and Howry's excitable energy and hype, there were moments when it felt like we were watching an actual basketball game through cinematic lenses. And, and you know what else is brilliant? This ball movement, man. Check it out. Oh! Simply put, their presence brought an entirely different vibe than the first Space Jams, and it arguably made this game just as memorable as its predecessors. Really, could any of us think of a better pair for this movie? I'm not exactly sure what we just witnessed here. <laughs> he just got bonus points for those bars. He was spitting hot fire. Number four, is this a Cartoon Network block party? Let's get some butts in DC. Who the fuck is that blue guy? How big are these butts? In case a new legacy didn't make it clear <laughs> early on, Warner Brothers has <laughs> proudly housed tons of IPs from across decades and decades of movies and television. This revelation became Holy insanely shit. overwhelming when spotting the oh. dozens of Cartoon Network shows, specifically those made by animation studio Hey! Oh so the my, what ones the? Include <gasps> the, and the Mystery Gremlins. Incorporated Gang, Yogi Bear, The Flintstones, The Iron Giant, The Jetsons, Penelope Pitstop, and Space Ghost. What the Look fuck? Look closer into the background and you may find several other cartoons, old and new, being represented during the game. It looks like we're in some kind of computer-generated basketball game. Number three, The Nerd Lux. Let it oh, what? Hold on there, Mr. Mm. Looney Tune. Hey, what do you think we are, stupid? Don't move my muscle. It just wouldn't feel right if a new legacy didn't make at least direct reference to or feature a cameo of certain characters. From no the way they did. Did that actually? Small snap form wall. 
No way they... Unfortunately, original bad boss Swackhammer is nowhere to be seen, but his cronies, on the other hand, are given a bit of screen time. The nerds oh. make an appearance in a couple of shots cheering for the goon squad and showing dismay for their team falling behind. Guess they were wanting some form of revenge against the tunes after losing their game. Losers! Sorry. Choke artists! Sorry again. Wait till I get you back on Moron Mountain. Oh. It's cool that these little dudes were given a small nod for us older. I don't want an ad! What the fuck? I don't want an ad! Fuck you! You can't! Number two, the Animaniacs. Where's Rick and Morty? I guess that's number they one. They may not have been able to go zany to the max, but seeing the Warner siblings in this movie was like watching two best friends reunite. For those who didn't grow up in the 90s or early 2000s, the Looney Tunes me. would cross over with Animaniacs a few times throughout the show's run. The constant shout-outs to each other would continue more prominently as Tiny Toon Adventures gained popularity. So, to find the Warners showing their support for the tunes was incredibly heartwarming. It would have been funny though if hey! one of them interfered Wait, what? Was that Mickey Mouse? Wait, what? I didn't know that. Over with Animaniacs a few times throughout the show's run. The constant shout-outs to each other would continue more prominently as Tiny Toon Adventures gained popularity. So, to find the Warners showing their support for the tunes was incredibly heartwarming. Right. Is that Mickey Mouse? I don't know who the fuck that is. That looks like Mickey Mouse. It would have been funny though if one of them interfered with the game at some point or messed with the commentators. What a play from Lola and LeBron. Is that a monster jam? Before we reveal the best cameo of the movie, here are some honorable mentions. Ilsa Lund. This was just for that play it again, Sam joke, wasn't it? Sing it, Sam. Oh, you got baggage, lady. I can relate. <laughs> Rick and Morty. Cool to see, but should these two be popping into movies aimed at kids? We're done running tests on your badger thing. It turns out his condition is irreversible. I'll never erase what I saw from my brain. He's your problem now, Dum Dum. <laughs> That's the best one. That's number one. What are you talking about? He's got plenty. The unscumming beings like LG. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. The Iron Giant. At this point, he's become bigger than Superman. <laughs> Big Chungus. Given the meme status, Aye. it'd be weird for Looney Tunes to not reference it. Uh, you missed your cue. Oh, rabbit season. All right. <laughs> Now say, I'm hunting rabbits. They're trying to chase me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And it's going to be Michael Jordan, isn't it? And get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. Come on. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into Come your on. settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Michael Jordan. I knew it. Look out for that toy step, Doc. It's a real Lulu. Buck Bunny. Uh, you were expecting maybe the Easter Bunny? Not only was this <laughs> the was best cameo, joke. it was one of the movie's highlights. As the Toon Squad struggles to come up with a winning plan, Sylvester comes back and tells them he's found Michael Jordan. You hey. found him? Oh, I can feel his power already! Ooh, I can hear his shoes! Everyone's hopes, including our own, rise up as Air Jordan's legendary theme song starts to play. Sneakers thumping against the ground as he approaches in slow mo. Only problem is, this was not the Michael Jordan we found. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Number 23, Michael Jordan! Come on, man. That's Michael B. Jordan, the actor. Yeah, this was Michael B. Jordan, not Michael Air Jordan. Only Looney Tunes could make a letdown like this so hilarious. You hear me? Clear out four, I can't lose. Stay right. with me. Yeah, y'all got this. I'm, I'm too much. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to my seat. Do you agree with our picks? No. Rick and Morty's the best one. Okay. Rick and Morty's the second best one. Rick and Morty, that was a sick one. I want to see that. I want to see, um... In a Rick and Morty thing, honestly, the Tasmanian Devil in one of the episodes of Rick and Morty, you know, I referenced to the Looney Chainsaw, I've been so fucking sick. You understand? 